Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. As we finally continue with the last of the Hannibal Lecter series, I'm going to review the fifth installment, which is another prequel to all the Hannibal Lecter films, which is now, once again, based on a novel by Thomas Harris. It takes place uh, way back about what was it like if Hannibal Lecter was very young, which is called Hannibal Rising. An adaptation of a novel from 2006 and just came out in 2007 in February about how Hannibal Lecter in his younger years gets his revenge on the killers that actually killed his sister and with the help of his Japanese aunt. It's of course distributed by MGM with Weinstein Company, along with producer Daniel De Laurentiis and his wife Martha. It stars Gaspar Illy, a young French actor, with Aaron Thomas, Don Lee, Dominic West, Breda Fans, Helena Leah Tohofska, Kevin McKidd, Richard Brake. Stefan Walters, Ivan Mutrovic, and Robbie Kay. It's written by Thomas Harris and it's directed by Peter Weber. The movie began set in 1944 during the World War II of the Hitler's invasion of the Soviet Union. Eight-year-old Hannibal Lecter, who's played by Aaron Thomas, had lives in Lecter Castle in Lithuania, where his younger sister Misha and her parents had traveled to the family's hunting lodge in the woods to loot the abandoned German troops. The Nazis, however, had taken out of the country soon of occupied by the Soviet Union, and during their retreat they destroyed the tank that stopped at the Lecter's family lodge looking for water. But all of a sudden a huge explosion had occurred, killing Lecter's family and everybody at sight, while Lecter and Misha wants up surviving into the cottage. Till all of a sudden Five former Lithuanians, military men that's led by a Nazi cooperator, Badis Budas, has stormed in and captured them, actually tying them up, while finding no other food in a bitterly cold, bolitic winter. Suddenly, one of the guys actually brought in a dead bird for them to eat, which it turned out it wasn't enough. So then, suddenly the men wants up killing and eating his sister Misha as Lecter suddenly started to feel very traumatized and scared and then after that he wanders off through the wilderness until he was taken to an orphanage. Eight years later Lecter's castle had turned into a Soviet orphanage and Lecter who's now a teenager who's played by Gaspard Yulio I wound up uh, being brutalized by a bully, and he actually later escaped from the orphanage to live in Paris with his widow aunt, who was a Japanese woman named Lady Murasaki, who was played by Gon Lee. And while in France, he, he became a student, which later commits his very first murder at, by killing a local butcher who wants up insulting her. And then he becomes a, a primal suspect of the murder by Inspector Pauly, who was a French detective who also lost his family in the war. But during his aunt's intervention, Lecter escapes the punishment for the crime. So he later becomes a younger person to admit it to medical school in France, working on a scholarship at the hospital in Paris. He was given a job preparing for divers. So one day he experienced a condemned war criminal receiving sodium from petrol injections to recall the details of his war crimes. So attempt to actually recall the names of who was responsible for his sister's death, he actually injected himself with it Yeah, because he keeps having all these nightmares uh, all this time. He was trying to figure out um, who actually did all this stuff. By, by their names. So actually, as a result of this, he decided to uh, search for all the killers out there by actually finding 
one of the dock techs that the deserters actually had left in, you know, during the killing of, of his sister. So one of them turned out to be Dorlex, who actually shows up and attempts to kill him by actually tying him up onto a tree where he brings in the horse and he actually sings that song that he actually sang to her as he remembers. And he basically just, you know, grabs the rope, you know, going one by one and, you know, telling them where all the others at. And then at, as a result of this, he actually pulls it up harder as he can until suddenly his neck starts to uh, cut off exactly like that. And the blood starts to shoot out right into his face as all the blood went into his ear and everything. And he actually licks it. So that was his revenge. So he finally, uh, once again, going after all the other guys that follow and tries to kill them one by one. He, he later s begins his search for the rest of, of the Misha murders by going to Fontainebleau to visit at a restaurant that belongs to one of the killers. It's where he then saw Kalina's younger daughter, who's actually wearing Misha's bracelet. So Lecter wants to taking calling this dog tag and tucking it in into the pocket so for her father to find. Of course the butcher's murder as we saw you know, during the middle of the film was was already laid on the plate and which apparently Aunt the aunt was about to take it take it away from so pretend like this actually happened. Just so he can get away with murder. So anyway he goes around going after all the rest of them including the Gutas, who's now a sex trafficker and becoming the dispatch of the second member of the group. He begins to go after Lecter at the medical school. But Lecter wants up killing Zygma's Milko by drowning him into the fomicide into the, his laboratory. And then after that, Gutas and the rest of the men wants up going after him as he was preparing to kill Gutas right in front of the, the lady that he had, his uh, maid. You know, suddenly a fire spark had shoot up, you know, burned the entire room, and then Gudas and the rest had escaped. And then Gudas uh, had wound up kidnapping Lady Murazaki by giving him um, a phone call by hearing all the sounds of the birds. And then suddenly he goes there and actually threatens uh, Kalana's children. He wants to frighten Kalana's by giving up the location of of the houseboat that he, that he goes up to. Lecter tries to spare his life, but then suddenly, you know, Colonus pulls a gun and actually, uh, and then Lecter wants to, you know, stabbing him in the neck and kill him completely. And then finally, he went after Gudas and just to save uh, Lady Muzaki and killed every single one of them on on board and and actually tortures him by actually carving the letter M for Misha. Yeah, and then, but of course, Gudas wants up claiming to Lecter that he too had ate uh, half of his sister, that it was left out. But he knew that, you know, he was lying just, just to get right towards it. So he just, he basically just tries to kill him anyway. But, well, uh, Lady Murazaki had escaped, and Lecter professes love to her by being so horrified, she actually says to him, he flees from him, and then suddenly the houseboat explodes, only to find out if, if Lecter had died in there, but actually he escaped. So all of them were dead, and he emerges from the woods, and, and which is at the last scene in the movie, he travels to Canada, where he actually hunts the last member of the group, named Grants. So, and then the movie ends. Well, I'll give you this. This movie did have its moments. I mean, I, I love the chemistry between Hannibal Lecter and Lady Murazaki because at least it shows what was it like. Yeah, they have experienced, you know, the loss of their families and, and they had to deal with it all this time. And the fact that, you know, her aunt is actually helping him out. Though it is kind of silly to actually see him, you know, practicing on how to uh, attack by um, by actually doing a lot of fencing with the samurai sword and everything that he was trying out. 
and the testing and everything that they've done. Yeah, I thought that was silly. But, but then of course we had the inspector who suspects some of the serial killers that actually killed those guys. Yeah, by chopping off their heads. And yeah, it gets really. I mean, there were too many killings, a lot of gore that they went into, and all that, because that's pretty much what you expect from what the film had to achieve. But of course, like I said, they 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 all had experienced the same tragedy. You know, they lost their families during the war, so on and so forth. And I'll give you this: I the actors, um, including uh, Gaspar Yuli, who played the, the young Hannibal Lecter. He did a good job, and I, you know, for a French actor, I think he did sort of had the the decency to do all the mannerisms that Hannibal Lecter actually had uh, on, you know, all these facial expressions that he makes when he smirks. But you notice you can see that that crescent on his cheek. It was sort of creepy and very impressive the way he does all that. So he does have the spirit a little bit there. So I'll give you that. And all the others uh, did are right. Uh, Ray of fans, you know, who's been in a lot of films uh, before this. Uh, I guess he, you know, this was sort of a different challenge for him to play one of the villains. But I guess you could say it, it is sort of laughable at times. But of course, he had to be the one responsible for for the death of his sister. So yeah, I mean, cause all with all the rest of the guys. So that. So basically the whole film is just revenge. That's all it is. It's, you know, they're trying to make him look more heroic as, as it seems. And he's trying to save uh, Lady Murasaki for having these guys kidnapped her. And trying to go after the guys who did all this. Um, the movie had two versions, of course. The theatrical and the extended version. But between those versions, I think the extended version shows more of the story. You know, instead of all this editing that they put into it to cut down the two hours in, in a minute but with that aside um, it isn't really worth watching I mean between those two versions it, it's just an unnecessary prequel it was done mostly so it can follow the, the last four of the novel so it will complete itself like they wanted to see what was it like if Hannibal Lecter was very young and how he experienced all of this you know, before he became a cannibalistic serial killer and a psychiatrist. It, it, I mean, it, it's just basically what it is. Just, you know, he just goes around, you know, killing all these killers that, that harmed his sister. The fact that he's been traumatized all of his life. I mean, that, and the fact that he becomes a medical student and everything. And it's just it just got boring after a while and it, it was too much it was too slow it seemed like they were just going for that particular pace and it just didn't work at all and it just to be fair it just didn't need to be made now I mean I know they they wanted to have a younger Hannibal Lecter to make it sound more like the character that Anthony Hopkins played by using that voice especially when he keeps saying uh, well hello milady yeah, in that sort of way. And he's also very quiet at times, too. But, yeah, but of course, once again, you see a lot of gore. A lot of these shots of, you know, him getting stabbed, um, strangled up by the rope and until your head starts to cut right open and, you know, chopping up the head with a samurai sword and all this other stuff. It's just too much of that. Um, not not enough for what the story was going for. It's just this was a disappointing um, attempt for for Thomas Harris to come up with. Also, there was one scene in the movie where he was actually trying out the mask they just found from the statue that he saw that was sort of resembled to the mask that they use in the earlier films. Yeah, where he all he actually got trapped inside the the cellar. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, that that's what they were going to go for. I don't think the book was in any special readers, so... <laughs> I guess that explains it. So anyway, um... If you love all the Hannibal Lecter films... Between this film, then... Surely enough, you'll be disappointed. But for those who... Who cares, then... 
then take your risk on it. It, it you know, it may be worth watching, but it's not particularly a good movie. Not at all. It's, it, it's a waste of time. So don't bother. So anyway, I give Hannibal Rising one and a half star. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.